Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Basic Income Tea on the 14th of June, 2020. I'm Daniel Feher from Unconditional Basic Income Europe. And uh, Basic Income Tea is a kind of online talk show that we started a few weeks ago as a response to the corona crisis situation. Uh, the idea is to bring together basic income advocates, people who are interested um, uh, in this uh, topic uh, across Europe and talk about issues connected to basic income, but also have a look around what is going on in the different countries around the continent. So we have alternating um, topics. Sometimes uh, we discuss about general topics, like we had a look at the EU um, response to the corona crisis, EU solidarity. We talked about gender issues with view of the corona crisis. And we also had a look at the situation in the United Kingdom. We had, uh, uh, we had one discussion about the situation in Spain. And today we look at two countries more to the east of the European Union, to Poland and Hungary which are countries, unfortunately, quite often in the news these days, also connected to Corona, but also, of course, connected to all uh, other debates. Um, normally, it's about lack of democracy, about the, the far-right governments, uh, steps curtailing media freedom, curtailing opposition rights, um, doing campaigns against different uh, minorities and so on. But this is not what we want to talk about today. We want to shed light more on questions. How do these governments actually handle the corona crisis within the country? How do they react to, to these challenges? How do they protect their economy, their citizens? So, and therefore I'm very happy to have two experts with me. Um, we have Marta Tychner from Poland. Marta is a seasoned campaigner, NGO campaigner for the organization We Move EU. And before she started working there, she was also, among others, active in the Polish Razem party. Uh, and we have also Bence Tordai, who is a member of the Liberal Green Parbeset party in Hungary, and he is also a member of the Hungarian parliament. So, I think... Um, that's already enough as an introduction, so let's go into media's race. Um, Marta, uh, how is roughly described the situation in Poland? How, how do the people feel about the government uh, handling the crisis? Hello, hi, thank you for, for inviting me. Um, so it's a very peculiar situation we have uh, in in Poland right now because uh, what you can see maybe on the news outside Poland I think is also appropriate to describe the situation in Poland. So the crisis is perceived mostly as a political crisis uh, because of the of the presidential election we are having uh, in the middle of uh, of the of the pandemic. And this is the debate. I mean, it's not that it, it, um, all other topics disappear, but it's true that this presidential election is like the thing that is happening right now. It was postponed. Uh, we didn't know until the very last moment if and when and so on. And with, uh, somehow with this, uh, the, the government and also the opposition, manage, they managed to like cover 
which is amazing, really. They managed to cover uh, the huge uh, societal and, and economic um, change shift crisis we're having, like everywhere, everywhere else, right? Um, uh, but uh, it's true that it's also, you know, uh, like the situation is like everywhere. There is a lockdown, right? Uh, the the health uh, the health crisis is not very acute. Uh, um, it's I think the case in all Central European crisis, uh, uh, countries. Um, so there is a lockdown without a health crisis, right? Um, and obviously the government started reacting to this. We had four now, uh, four programs were, uh, were announced uh, to deal with the, with the um, economic um, uh, results of, of the crisis. Um, and it's a, it's a very eclectic kind of approach our government is having. Um, so law and justice uh, had been already previously a very eclectic uh, um, political party and government when it comes to e economy. So they they like combine measures that, that are progressive from like our point of view could be could be could be called progressive, even though the the aim of these of these measures is different. Uh, with a very, very liberal, neoliberal, conservative um, uh, measures. And this is also the case right now. So they, they, they go back and forth, back and forth between the two. Uh, there, is, um, there is support coming, like directly to the people, directly to the workers, a little bit. And at the same time, there is, um, there is huge support going to the financial sector and to businesses, which is good i mean this kind of crisis is like it's a different type of crisis that we are used to right so so even from the from the progressive perspective it's not it's it's like what we should be doing probably it's just that together with these measures uh, to help the businesses it's actually a very anti labor uh, these are very anti labor programs so um, the outcome is that it's like depending on where you are exactly what your exact situation and 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 private situation is uh you can be like um supported by the government or quite the opposite right and uh, it's um it's difficult like to say what the outcome is for like the general general population and when when we look into the the overall debates in in Poland, what are the demands that people are expressing the most? So what is the criticism towards the government's handling of the crisis that you hear that you would he hear in in media most frequently? This is interesting because uh, because because of the of of the lockdown, right? Uh, there's very limited, um, there are very limited um, opportunities and ways of, of expressing any social anger if there is, uh, if there is one. So uh, the most vocal um, group are businessmen. They're the only ones who actually manage to, to organize an actual protest in cars when it, the, the lockdown was still very a very strict, a very strict. Uh, it was a car protest in in Warsaw and several others. Um, so it's it's like to help. Mostly, the the demand is to help small businesses. Uh, but uh, as this is not a very uh, you know well organized group in terms of you know street protesters, this is not the people who normally go out to the streets. Uh, their demands are not yet very, very clear, really, because they, they come from different sectors, different uh, size of, of businesses, and so on, and so on. Um, but otherwise, you know, the general public doesn't express really too much. Um, uh, too much. We. It's generally the problem. We just don't know what's going on in the society because people just sit at, at homes, right? Um, uh, and we have. Um, like among the commentariat, so to say, uh, obviously the, the demands to to um, help more the working people because the, the 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 support is not enough, and also in many in many ways it's like like I said anti labor. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm 
I have to apologize to those who wanted to follow us on live stream. We had some technical problems there, but uh, according to the information I just got, uh, that's solved now. So welcome also to everybody who is following us today on the live stream. We just uh, jumped into the topic with Marta Tichner from Poland, Ben Zetorti from Hungary. And Marta just explained us more or less that the Polish government had a very mixed approach uh, towards dealing with the corona crisis. Most of its programs apparently favored businesses, uh, but still so far the only, only group who managed to voice some protests against the go government's handling of the crisis were the businessmen, uh, various uh, working class people apparently don't fare so well, but are also not finding the way to express their voice yet publicly. Um, before we go on uh, to, to Bence, um, just a quick word. If you are in the Zoom uh, following us, please feel free to, to introduce yourself in the chat. It's also nice to see who is here, who is following us. And then uh, feel free to comment anything we, we are saying here in the chat. And there is a Q&A tool in Zoom um, where, you can, where you can ask questions, which we can uh, then discuss later. Um, so feel free to use that. Um, Bente, uh, we know um, you are in a special situation because there is a law that forbids you to share fake news with us. So please just tell us the truth and nothing by the truth. Uh, how is it to, to experience this crisis in Hungary these days? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, it's really an interesting situation, but uh, not concerning the uh, tackling the hands crisis, because I would say it's uh, very typical. Uh, in Hungary, we, we have the same uh, measures, more or less, than in all the other European countries, with, with uh, smaller um, differences, but uh, the way as they uh, handle the economic crisis, it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, I think I have to quote Viktor Orban, who said, um, the goal is to create as many jobs as are destroyed by the virus. So uh, they really don't want to help people with um, something like unemployment assistance, or uh, especially with, with a basic income, an emergency basic income, or any other tools like that, but um, they subsidize uh, the capitalists uh, within a framework of crony capitalism. Uh, it is widely known that uh, Hungary is a hybrid regime, it's uh, semi-authoritarian, but um, in, in, in the economic field, it, um, it's a hardliner neoliberal uh, government uh, combined with, with this crony capitalist attitude. Uh, so they use all, all the opportunities to uh, expand their uh, economic power uh, through their oligarchs. And uh, what we see now is that, um, for example, uh, they give a lot of investment aid or uh, cheap loans or um, guarantees, equity injections, and so on uh, to to their partners, uh, to their um, familiars and uh, and oligarchs. So uh, instead of helping the people uh, in in this crisis, they they help uh, their friends in the in the economy. So you, if you are not a friend of Viktor Orban of a, or a friend of friend of uh, Viktor Orban, um, how, how are your, how is your situation these days in Hungary? What is your situation if you are just a normal entrepreneur? Uh, what is your situation if you are, uh, have been working for a company that uh, run out of business? Okay, I, I try to uh, show their best uh, measures and steps. For example, what would be very important uh, this 
Kurzarbeit program. Uh, the Hungarian version uh, is a very strict one and it affects uh, less than 3% of, of the employees uh, with an average support of uh, less than 500 uh, euros per month. Uh, they, they have, um, it was, I think, in the, um, some reports sent to the EU that 0.37% uh, of GDP will be sent for this Kurzarbeit program and, and uh, similar programs, uh, which would be the most important uh, step, I, I would think. Uh, but they communicate very uh, boldly. They state that uh, this is a historical uh, economic boosting package uh, with 20% uh, of the GDP, uh, which is fake news completely. Or but if nobody has been put in jail for that yet, I guess. Uh, not, not yet, but uh, a few people were uh, abused by police officers, so it's not so funny. <laughs> they yeah. just posted on Facebook and uh, they met some uh, guys in blue uh, in, in, in front of their doors uh, early in the morning. So it's, uh, it, it works in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, is there, um, do you sense some climate of fear or so? I mean, uh, we know that uh, in Hungary, the, the more uh, unfortunate part of the population uh, isn't really well organized politically anyway, and the whole structure of, of the Orban government is about vertical dependencies. Uh, so that's nothing new, but uh, has, has the crisis changed that? So also with this new law on uh, fake news, and so is it even more difficult or doesn't make this a difference? It's um, difficult to, to evaluate uh, the effects of, of these uh, moves. I wouldn't speak about fear, rather uh, apathy in a way. Uh, people are more focused on, on their own lives and uh, we have uh, only one uh, series of demonstrations uh, also by car and uh, it was the so-called hunking demonstrations uh, and those who, who took part in, in those uh, were penalted to hundreds of thousands of foreigners and um, probably it, it doesn't uh, make the people eager to, to uh, be involved <laughs> in uh, social or political activism. Mm. Um, Marta, what is the situation in Poland? Um, the big difference is you have a presidential election going on you have probably still a little bit more press freedom than uh, what is left over in Hungary. Um, it does, in, in what respect does the crisis influence also the, the discussions in the presidential elections? Um, and does it also have some uh, social policy aspects? So are questions of social policy also part of, of the discussions in the presidential elections? They obviously are, yes. But again, this is the background. This is something that is like a, the, the, um, not the, the, what, you, what you actually see uh, in the first place. So for example, for the past three days or something like this we have uh we've had another wave of uh, the anti-lgbt mm, campaign started started with it started with a charter for families or something like this um presented by the mm, by the current uh, president who is running for the for his second term and it's a like anti 
same sex um well not only marriages but any any sort of you know um you know, protection of families right we know it uh, we know it in hungary too it's like uh, it's like the um comes back all the time and it it uh, so this is the direction they're going in the in the presidential campaign right now this is the uh, this is what they're uh, uh how they're steering i mean this comes from the government right right and the opposition is like just answering these uh, um, whatever the topics are uh this is a of course a way to deflect the 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 debate from other from other topics uh like um like corruption scandals around the minister minister of health for example um, and also the 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 general the general economic situation but again it's it's um like for me personally it's just absolutely amazing how uh uh, how we have this debate w what we had before like debates that uh, that are like about other issues not the social eco economic issues like uh dominate the entire entire spectrum of what we of, of what we actually discuss even in this in this pandemic situation we are having right now so even now it's it's possible uh, it's possible to um and uh, obviously the the another aspect is that um the case before the main opposition party the civic platform and uh they now their candidate the the current mayor of warsaw who is polling not bad really but um this camp doesn't have any proposal or vision for the country pandemic or no pandemic right they they just don't know what they want they want to they want to get rid of the government this is all they want basically and if they're like pushed to say something they 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 go um they normally go to you know austerity uh programs and and uh and stuff like this of course it's it's getting less and less so because the the times are changing so to say but uh it's not that they can propose anything like more pro social that the government can so they beat the government beats them um easily uh, in this uh, in this area mm -hmm. um when we look at uh, the public debate of course for us uh, as as uh, basic income advocates it's also an interesting question uh how the discussion on on social policies uh, is shifting so in our idea obviously the state should support people on an individual basis without means testing in a universal uh, approach so it sh uh, th these help should be there support should be there for everyone uh, and in many countries we have noticed uh, such shifts uh, so not an introduction of basic income even not in spain despite of uh, the news but we have uh, seen in many countries that it has been made easier for people to apply for support without proving all the lengthy we are going through all the lengthy procedures they they had to do before uh, or for businesses to get uh, uh, unbureaucratic aid um, has that been also the case in poland in hungary uh, has that been um, demanded by somebody so if the government has not done that has that still been part of the public debate in some respect in poland yes uh a little bit it uh, it it moves in this direction so like i said in the beginning there we have we already have four four rescue programs and in in all uh, like every month we have a we have a rescue program a new one and in each of them there is some sort of unbureaucratic or support or or with very limited bureaucracy involved um and some of these there are elements of uh, where where you can 
say yes this is going in this direction right for example right now there will be um like there is this like the the, the most famous the most famous law and justice uh, social program is the is the kindergeld so the, the the money for kids um and it's unconditional it's basically an unconditional basic income for kids uh, and now they want to top up this payment um with an extra payment for holidays uh for example it was supposed to be something different in, in, in the beginning doesn't matter but they they like continue uh, continue this there is like a one off um one off support for small businesses who had to shut down um uh, so yes uh, there is this um but and there was also, also like a very briefly and also limited to some circles but there was a debate for like a couple of weeks maybe around like shall we go uh towards universal basic income um and uh like some people were very excited obviously not the government right but but like uh, on the left uh, it's like it, it's it's uh, this topic was revived and and uh, discussed again um so yeah so so the shift the shift is there i i can't say but I imagine it's different. I mean, I don't know much about Hungary, but I, I've, I've noticed that these, our two countries are always like quoted together, like Hungary and Poland this, Hungary and Poland that, whereas the, the economic policies uh, the two governments have is, uh, are, are really different. So I'm curious actually to, to, to learn what's happening in Hungary. So Bence, is Hungary about introducing basic income or not yet? Uh, not at all. We can't see such a shift. Uh, first of all, you have to know that uh, the Hungarian unemployment allowance scheme is the strictest in, in the European Union. Uh, the maximum uh, time of uh, this assistance is three months. Uh, it used to be nine, uh, but Peter's government changed it, and uh, the ma maximum amount is uh, the, at the level of the minimum wage. Uh, and after that, you have to um, you have an obligation to uh, go to a public employment program uh, where the wage is half of the minimum wage uh, or you you will lose all of your um, uh, social rights and only one third of the unemployment people uh, gets unemployment assistance that's that's the consequence so we we begin from very far from the idea of, of basic income uh, that's why it is very powerful to challenge this attitude uh, with our emergency uh, basic income program or, or a proposal and which says everyone should give at least 100,000 foreigns a month uh, which is more or less 300 euros uh, for children, half of it, and um, which is surprising that uh, not just our party dialogue for Hungary, which is not a green liberal but a green left party, but uh, also <laughs> sorry for the correction, uh, but also centrist liberal parties uh, like Momentum, for example, which is a member of Free New Europe. Uh, so they also support uh, such a solution, um, and that's a, that's a new challenge because uh, we just had a fresh poll result uh, which says 80% of Hungarian uh, people would uh, support a basic income scheme. Um, so Orban and and all the government has um, now a really tough. Um, um, opposition to to fight with finally <laughs> so they they have a strong narrative this uh, Berg based uh, society uh, but I, I wouldn't think that it's very popular amongst the people I guess it's a little bit difficult to keep up this argument that if you have no job it's your own fault because you don't try hard enough when due to the virus uh, hundreds of thousands are losing their jobs 
Yeah, the problem is uh, we, we don't have uh, reliable statistical data because uh, uh, the Central Statistical Office is totally controlled politically by the government and uh, we just can have estimations from, from different sources, uh, from public opinion polls, which states that uh, about 7% of, of the uh, employees uh, lost their jobs in the past few months, which is uh, pretty tough. But the official numbers are, are much lower than this. Mm. It's actually simple, if I, if I may, uh, it's actually very similar, uh, very similar in Poland. I mean, I was, I was talking about these uh, support programs and so on, and uh, they do exist, but in terms of the situation of the, of the working people, it's it's pretty similar. I mean, it's uh, mm, this the social turn that uh, law and justice took uh, five years ago. Uh, it was was really a, a, just a tiny correction of what we have. And um, for example, the uh, people in Poland don't register as unemployed because it makes absolutely no sense to do it. There is uh, mm, the unemployment benefit is uh, used to be 150 euros, uh, and it was for three months and then three months more, so even less. Um, and you you were obliged to like again be part of their programs and so on, and you couldn't work on the black market, for example, <laughs> during this time. Uh, so. Um, and only 15% are of, of people are actually um, entitled to any to any benefit. So, the the unemployment support is non-existent. is is just non-existent. And the the outcome is that right now, with when we know that basically everybody's um, situation at work changed somehow, like literally every worker had to undergo some change in the way they work. Uh, we just don't know what these changes are. Uh, they, uh, I saw a report saying that, the, that uh, uh, only 20% 20, 20 of those who actually lost their jobs now during this crisis were registered. But it's just an estimation. Again, we, we don't know. Um, there is an estimation that on average people work four and a half hours less than they used to. But again, it's an estimation. Uh, uh, like I said, some of the programs uh, which go in different directions uh, actually encourage, uh, encourage companies to pay people less, even if they have no problems at all. Uh, and companies like this exist and they just you know, lower wages or cut, uh, cut, employ uh, cut, uh, cut hours or officially, but unofficially you work at the same time and so on. Um, uh, so yeah, so the pressure on the, on, the, um, on the working class is huge and there is no resistance. There is no way to resist it right now. So it's- What, what do people do uh, when they um lose their jobs we've just heard that uh, the the state support is not really something they can rely on how, how do you survive it's it's private strategies all all, all over i mean um, again this is just my guess because i i um, we don't know enough but um the the way People react, but they just withdraw to family support network, uh, maybe friend, uh, friends, and so on, and they uh, and they just deal deal with it privately, like they they were like used to it since the 90s at least, right? You you you're on your own, you 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 just go with your whatever brother-in-law, and you 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 do something new. Uh, or you try to figure out what to do, or you start some black market activity, or whatever. Or you, it's it's very it's very interesting to see. If, like, if I may, just uh, two brief examples from my uh, my own observations. One is um, uh, I um, 
I'm moving houses, so I, I rely on deliveries and stuff like this. And I can see uh, how literally overnight you have uh, um, deliveries with no registration coming. So there is like a demand for deliveries, like and, and, and people with cars just start delivering you stuff and you just pay them cash and that's it. And another interesting uh, thing is that um, schools uh, reopened and kindergartens reopened, but it's not obligatory to put uh, to, uh, to to send your kids there, and uh, only to, uh, up to the age of ten. And uh, right now, the the number of kids who are back to school is uh, in at least in big cities where I saw the statistics below ten percent. Which means that over, it's it's amazing, right? Because the first thing that people people um, saw when the crisis came was like, oh my God, kids are at home. Like, what do we do with the kids? How do we work with the kids? And then three months later, it turned out that the price, I think, the the, the private support network, like people you, you who can support you and help you, just it started working, and somehow you just can do it i don't know how i mean i i know how because i uh, i sent my kid to school but only because i wanted i could manage right i already uh, um, developed a way of of doing it and um and here you are we are like outside of the state back to the private um, to the private uh, life is, is that something Ben Sevi also can observe in Hungary? So we had in the socialist time this notorious informal economy, which basically complemented for everything that the official economy was not able to provide for. Is that also where we are heading back to in, in Hungary? Uh, well, it's... Um difficult to tell you because we have just spread because spread this information uh, from from uh, poorer uh, countries or, or regions or villages uh, where all those people live who, who really suffer under this uh, crisis uh, we have some um, we have some articles uh, yes, we politicians or, or activists uh, talk to some people there, but um, we don't have uh, we don't have the, the uh, big uh, you know uh, the big picture. Um, there is a and and, and during this situation uh, we have a very cynical political campaign. Uh, which says no Hungarian is left alone, uh, which is obviously a, a huge lie. And still, you can see the videos on Facebook, on TV, on billboards. Uh, it, it's funded uh, from, of course, uh, government sources, uh, billions of foreigns, and um, it, it somehow so the reality and, and that picture that they try to uh, show up is so uh, super different that I have no words for that. Uh, we, we don't really have uh, good sources of information um, because all the state offices uh, and um, yeah, part of the media, of course, is, is controlled politically and um, it's it's hard to tell probably in in Budapest the situation is not that tough but uh, in smaller villages uh, I have no idea how they survive really okay uh, we can um, we are starting to get a few uh, questions from the audience also I would again encourage everybody where you will uh, you, you're in in the zoom um, webinar or you are following us live uh, send us your questions um, 
Peter is asking, vast majority of the people in Czech Republic believes the pandemic is over, despite all the available information, likely because of the possible economic consequences of acknowledging the full extent of the situation. Is that similar in Poland and in Hungary, I would like to add? Is, is, is there a push that is something we, we here in, in Germany also feel uh, that people really dislike the, the measures, uh, the lockdown measures and want to basically talk their, their way out of the crisis? Uh, I think so, yes. Uh, but on top of that, um, the, there, is, um, uh, there is a gradual um, dismantling of the, of the health measures, um, uh, the safety measures, um, and the numbers are going up, the, the numbers of cases are going up, but there is, for, it's not, not long, only economic uh, economical but also political reasons that there will be no uh, no closure um, right now because until the 28th of, uh, of um, uh, June uh, the government will have to show that the situation is under control and the election can uh, can take place um, or even until the if there is a second round and it's quite probable there is going to be a second round uh, so until the 6th, I believe, of July. Mm. And it's, um, well, it's difficult, of course, but it's, a bit, it's difficult <laughs> to, to survive, like we all know, right, to survive in, in the lockdown. But, uh, and it's like, I, I think I wouldn't judge, uh, wouldn't be too judgmental about people who, who, who want to just come back to their lives. Uh, uh, but uh, on the other hand, it is a bit scary because in Poland we had uh, like a very quick closure of everything. I think the government, my impression was the government was like, oh, I, maybe we can just not have it in Poland if we close quick enough. And they, they really started very early. Uh, and also with these like so slight authoritarian tendencies, like close something, it's nice, no? and um until he used the opportunity so the numbers were were low but they never they never fell they were stable 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 over weeks and then uh the the opening started and the numbers went went up so actually it feels like as if the wave of of, of cases is only coming and we are just beginning in the beginning and um interestingly or sadly the, the, the most of the cases right now are in the mines in in um, hard coal uh, mines in Silesia. Uh, so yeah, and because for economic reasons they were not closed, right? They are closed now, but they were not. Dente, how was that? Well, that's interesting because um, sometimes it seems that uh, the government overreacts uh, the virus situation in a way in in some of their steps uh, but uh, at the same time they they monitor uh, the public opinion every day uh, they uh, do a poll and uh, try to find out what what is uh, the desire of the people and um, they That's are, how you got free parking in Budapest as a virus. Uh, maybe, it's, yeah, it's a bit different. Uh, it's it's part of a political game, but uh, but they react very sensibly. Uh, they are good populists uh, in in this sense, and uh, they feel that most of the people would like to go back to normal, which is totally understandable and. Uh, in, in the last weeks, um, the feeling on, on being threatening, I, it's, it's, it's not that uh, strong, I would say. And uh, most of the interest uh, 
goes to to the same direction and uh, probably the lo loosening of of these um, measures uh, is on the table um, but uh, they they can't let it totally going uh, it's on its our way uh, on way because yeah most of the uh, experts says that uh, we, we have to prepare to a second wave so they somehow try to uh, keep up uh, this this um, state of not emergency but some kind of special uh, state legally and and in uh, in healthcare but uh, uh, in the mo in, in other fields of our life, uh, probably things will be uh, normal soon. Yeah. Um, one one of the areas which I'm also interested uh, to hear about. Um, of course, we have these quite unpleasant national governments in both countries, but at the same time. In Hungary, especially since uh, the last autumn, uh, in Poland, uh, probably a little bit longer, we also have opposition parties in power in municipalities. So, Ben, so you were very modest about the size of your party before, but as it happens, the mayor uh, of, of Budapest uh, is also a member of your party. You have uh, mayors and vice mayors in, in districts of Budapest. Uh, there are other towns in the countryside run by the opposition. In Poland, I think the situation, situation is very similar. So you just said, uh, mentioned the presidential candidate um, of the opposition is also the mayor of Warsaw, a very city of similar size uh, to Budapest. How is it, uh, how, how can these politicians, how can these municipalities do something in this situation? Have they been able to, to help people in a way that the government was not ready to? Can I begin? Yeah. Yeah, so we have a good news for UBI fans that uh, the mayor of Budapest is also uh, pro-UBI and um, we have a two-level uh, local authority regime in Budapest. Uh, we have mayors in district and, and we have a Lord Mayor. Uh, and um, the social issues is, uh, is um, on the contra of, of uh, the um, districts. And there's only one district in Budapest, which is led by a politician uh, from Parvese Dialogue from, for Hungary. Uh, this is the first district uh, led by Marta Nassai, and they uh, imposed an emergency basic income. They just uh, put our model into reality. Uh, it, yeah, it took just, uh, I mean, it, it lasts uh, for three months. It's really an, an emergency measure uh, as the local authorities has uh, very limited uh, means. Still, this is the first time that a uh, um, serious uh, basic income program uh, came into force in Hungary. Well, that's great to hear. I didn't know that, actually. I, um, it's really great news, and I'm afraid I cannot say anything uh, like this. <laughs> I have no such news from Poland. So uh, we don't have... Uh, well, opposition mayors, yes, we have mayors from, uh, from opposition, opposition parties or independent mayors. It also, um, they're also quite um, a thing, right? Uh, but there is literally no uh, like progressive, progressive mayor, right? So uh, they are all more or less centrists or center-right uh, uh, politicians. So, for example, the mayor of Warsaw uh, leads a very, very conservative uh, in terms of um, like very, very um, um, like non-audacious uh, um, local local policy and uh, very pro-business, very 
I will not touch too much and uh, just build a road somewhere kind of uh, kind of local policy so it's not it's not really spectacular I would say in any way and um, what can I say no nothing's nothing's happening like this here it's a shame but no um one more area um, I would like to look at is obviously the healthcare sector or broader the whole care sector is very much got very much in the focus during the whole crisis and i know it from hungary i assume it's uh, not very different in poland that the healthcare sector has been uh, run down in 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 during various neoliberal governments not not investing enough and also with lots of um, lots of skilled people leaving to to western europe for to to work there um, instead uh, so how have you observed has has the healthcare sector performed in this situation? How much did these problems uh, became more visible? How much effect did they have on, on the handling of, of the pandemic? Well, it was awful here. It was, it was awful. So um, first of all, immediately what happened, uh, they, um, Care, care homes and, and hospitals became um, focal points of the, of the pandemic uh, because uh, uh, mainly because nurses work uh, in, in many places at once to make their living. Um, uh, the, the, health, the healthcare uh, sector here is in, in a disastrous shape a disastrous shape so for example the the average age of of uh, polish nurses is around the retirement age uh, so we have older nurses after the ret retirement age and slightly younger and virtually no younger people coming uh, to the um, to the job there were there were protests of nurses before uh, the pandemic there were protests of young doctors before the pandemic, they were smashed by the by the um, by law and justice recklessly, recklessly, um, with the smear campaign, awful. Um, and right now, they even though at the first uh, when it first uh, happened, right, everybody was like, "Oh, our heroes!" You know, the doctors, the nurses, we have to clap from balconies like everywhere in Europe and so on. And there were more interest, and there were more like, uh, oh, we have to do something with the health sector and so on. But in fact, nothing is nothing is really proposed. No, uh, but the, the, thing, the things that are, that are proposed are, for example, there is a a proposal for an easier uh, um, way to privatize hospitals. It's now easier. Uh, there is a, an extension of working hours uh, for. Uh, like the the uh, the pretext for this was exactly this the health sector right no they have to work long hours because we need them blah 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 so the the maximum uh working hours per day were extended to 12 but for the entire working force so basically the the, the working uh the, the the labor movement lost one of the most important wins uh in the in in, in this century right with this legislation um so this is uh, this is really um outrageous what's happening with us uh, with uh, with the health sector and how you can just ignore how how absolutely disastrous it is right now there and do nothing instead of the of the health uh, situation right now has that been part of the public debate to some extent the situation uh, to some extent yes of course but i i must say that the 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 health sector as such and the debate about the health sector was it was like the first six weeks maybe of the lockdown it was there and then 
because we saw that it's like sort of uh, under control, that there is no Italian scenario happening right now. Uh, other topics won in the public visibility. How, how was this in Hungary, then, sir? Uh, the situation uh, in the healthcare system is very similar than the one in, in Poland, um, which is special that uh, we don't have a ministry for uh, healthcare. Uh, we just have a state secretary, and the minister is totally incompetent. Is is so obviously uh, dumb? What what they have made? Uh, the most problematic step was that. Uh, they wanted to have 60% of the beds of hospitals to, to be vacant. Uh, so they sent home a lot of people with serious uh, health conditions or, or chronic diseases, acute diseases, and, uh, and it, it was a scandal. Um, so we, we had uh, almost 40,000 vacant beds uh, for coronavirus um, patients, and we have a few hundred patients uh, at, at the same time. So it, um, it, that was what uh, I called our reaction. Um, and the other story is, is uh, the wages in the healthcare system, um, nurses especially, but uh, uh, doctors also are very underpaid and uh, um, the uh, opposition parties uh, request a 100% uh, raise for them, but the only thing what will happen is a one-time extra money of uh, 100 euros net. What they got, yeah. Mm. Uh, did, did you have the feeling that uh, this, this, uh, these problems have had some impact on, on the public discussions. So do people start to pay more attention to this problem than before? Um, when, when we see the problem maps, uh, in mental maps uh, in people's mind, the healthcare is always in top three or usually the number one. And uh, it's, will remain uh, this way but um, interestingly uh, also those people who, who support the government uh, or governing parties uh, see that uh, the, the state of the healthcare system is terrible and still they, they uh, give their vote uh, to Fidesz which is well yeah we, we have a lot of things to do with that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I want to uh, thank both of you. Our time is up. I felt this was very interesting discussion. We heard, I learned uh, many new aspects also. Um, I think we've also seen what is similar, what is different between the two countries. We've learned that uh, the, the virus has not overthrown any of the, of the regimes in Poland and Hungary, it, it will be interesting how this develops further. I want to thank everybody who has joined us, who has uh, followed the discussion. We will keep organizing the basic income tea sessions also in the next weeks. Um, next Sunday, our topic is the future of work. So the question, how do we look at social useful activities, social useful work versus paid employment? What is uh, our understanding of, of work? How has the entire pandemic situation influenced this? So I hope you are going to tune in again. I wish you all a uh, very nice Sunday evening. Thanks, Marta. Thanks, Spencer. Thanks, everyone. Thank and goodbye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.